goodness of God laid at thee to repentance. Yes. Right yes. straight out of Exodus. Yes. Long suffering has given man space to repent. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So moral long suffering. We want to go over to Romans 9. What if God, willing to show His wrath and to make His power known, mm -hmm. endured with much long suffering the vessels of wrath fitted to destruction? 9, Romans 9.22 and that he might make known the riches of his glory on the vessels of mercy, which he had afore prepared unto glory. Mm -hmm. 9.23 Notice it is in verse 22, the word is not patience, the word is long-suffering. For Paul's purpose, he has classified people in two categories for his purposes here in the Scripture, uh, either vessels of wrath or vessels of mercy. Yes. And then, you know, yes. if you've been studying with this in the book of Acts, Peter says the very same thing. Yes. He has, it says, I'll read it for you, but in every nation, him that feareth and worketh righteousness is accepted with him. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Those are vessels of mercy. Mm -hmm. Be Paul speaking. And, and this is opposed to those. that, that is, these, these people here feared him and worketh righteousness. Now this is opposed to those who fear him and hide. Those would be uh, vessels fitted for destruction. Mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, if, if Paul were saying this. There are people whom God has formed as vessels of wrath. King James says, fitted for destruction. In verse 21, 9, 21, God is the potter who has power over the clay. Yep. From one lump, He makes a vessel of honor. Mm -hmm. and, and from the other, a vessel of dishonor. Now, God has done this. Yep. And, and it should not be seen as a hard thing. Yep. But rather, it is a good thing. And let us fear God. These vessels have a utility. Both determined Amen. by God. One vessel will be filled with the wrath of God and the other will be filled with the riches of God's glory. Both vessels are made out of clay. Yes. And you know that Paul is using Scripture here. Uh, he, he's taking us right out of Isaiah 64, 8. But now, O Lord, Thou art our Father. Mm -hmm. We are the clay and Thou art the potter. And we are the work of Thy hand. Mm -hmm. So what does Paul say in response to this? that God has vessels of, vessels of mercy and vessels of wrath, vessels of honor and vessels of, dis, of dishonor. What, what is Paul's response to this? Paul says, you may ask me, mm -hmm. then why does God still find fault with anybody? Mm -hmm. For who can resist the will of God? Romans 9, 19. And Paul responds, Nay, but, O man, who art thou replies against God? Shall the thing form say to him that formed it, Why thou hast made me thus? Romans 9.20. Now Paul is quoting from Isaiah 29.16. Mm -hmm. Amen. That, that's, I mean, you got to see that Paul is going back to the Old Testament to pull the, these things. These spiritual right. truths are there. And Romans 9.20 is straightforward what Paul says. It says plainly, we should not be questioning God. Why did God make me such? If there's any questionings, any questions to be asked, we should be asking ourselves. The questions, not asking God. For example, we could ask kind of these kinds of questions so far. What profile do I think I fit? Uh, am I a vessel of mercy or am I a vessel of wrath? These are the kind of questions you should be asking. Now, ask God any questions. Are we interested and concerned that God should have mercy and compassion on me? Am I, is that important to me? Uh, do we want to be a vessel of mercy? Is it important to escape the wrath of God? These are the kind of questions yeah. a person should be prompted Amen. to ask. Amen. Well, either way, these these uh, these questions, they can be confirmations to you. Yeah. Now, we are still looking into the long-suffering of God. It's, it's the staying power of God's mercy and His grace. So, we want to take a look back to uh, verse 23 in the ninth chapter. And that He might make known yeah. the riches of His glory on the vessels of mercy which He had afford prepared on the glory, 923. Amen. And just a comment or two <clears throat> about the significance between fitted and prepared. Mm -hmm. Coach, you know that He used the word fitted for destruction and used the word prepared yeah. for glory. Uh -huh. Now, we, we want to go back to the cup of God's wrath. This yeah. is what I did. So let's go back to the cup of God's wrath. The cup will be full when wicked men have been completely fitted for destruction. Right. The long-suffering right. of God. That's right. That time when men's hearts are given over completely to evil. 
Right. Matthew 25, 41, Jesus says, everlasting fire was prepared for Satan and his angels. Uh -huh. And it says here that men who are fitted for destruction, who are meek to go there, mm -hmm. fitted for the, those are those who will go there also. It will be the difference between destruction and glory. Uh -huh. It will be the difference between fitted and prepared. Mm -hmm. Now God uh, focus has always been on preparing. Uh, then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, Come ye blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. Uh, God's attention is on the working that on the work that he is preparing. He is preparing vessels of mercy. And you know who are they? They're vessels of mercy God is preparing. You know who they are. God has an eye out for them, incidentally. They fear God. They have a particular kind of heart. They have a contrite heart. Yeah. Uh, they're very serious mm -hmm. about being accepted, uh, acceptable to God, received of God. Uh, God is working. This is to preparation. God is working to get more of the truth about Himself to these kinds of people mm -hmm. because they have found favor in God's eye. The whole work of salvation is a work of preparation. The Scriptures are about the things that have been done in preparation. From the very beginning, God has been preparing for Himself a people. God's long-suffering long has been in order to prepare a people for glory. His glory. The focus has been on God preparing to make known the riches of His glory. It's all about God showing the riches of His glory to people. And He's preparing Amen. them for that. Moses Amen. said, Show me thy glory. And it pleased the Lord to show His glory to Moses. Mm -hmm. There is a glory that is to be revealed. And, and we rejoice in the hope of that glory. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Uh, at this point, we have not been confronted face to face with the glory of God. We only have the knowledge of His glory. Mm -hmm. and, and by faith, no less. Uh -huh. We haven't actually seen God face to face. We just know about his glory. Mm -hmm. uh, we are be we that's what we've been prepared for. This yeah. uh, final confrontation with the glory of yeah. God. I think of John 1 14, it's already been read once today. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten Son, full of grace and truth. It's part of the preparation. And this is the knowledge of God that the Son has brought to us, mm -hmm. that he is good. He is Amen. merciful, gracious, and He's long-suffering. Yeah. He's abundant mm -hmm. in goodness and truth. This is what we glory in. We don't glory in ourselves. Paul didn't glory mm -hmm. himself. And this is what we want others to see. Mm -hmm. It's the glory of God. Yeah. And John 1.14, it goes hand in hand like all Scriptures do. 1.14, John 1.14 goes hand in hand with 2 Corinthians 4.6. And you're familiar with this scripture. For God, who commanded the light shine of darkness, has shined in our hearts mm -hmm. to give the light and the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Now we know where to look to see the glory of God. Mm -hmm. We look to Jesus. Mm -hmm. This is what Satan is trying to prevent, after all, is us seeing the glory of God in the face of Jesus. So let us conclude with this very familiar verse then. 2 Corinthians 3.18 But we all, with open face, beholding in a glass the glory of the Lord, are changed to the same image from glory to glory, even by the Spirit of the Lord. <clears throat> the objective, of course, is to be changed into the same image from glory to glory. Yes, amen. That's, that's, our, that's our work of preparation. Yeah. And in God, it involves God's mercy and His grace and His long-suffering. And it involves us as well as we look to Him and we're changed into His glory. We're Amen. being prepared 